just finishing up the flywheel. This is my finishing pass. Put a bit of a chamfer on there. But I've faced off the end. This is one and five eighths stock. I don't know what kind of steel it is, but it sure isn't machining very well. The finish isn't much, considering this is a brand new tool. But uh, I, I took a, a cut on the OD also to improve the uh, uh, concentricity and get rid of the, the scale and all of that. Now I will uh, center drill it, pilot drill it, and then uh, ream it 3 16 Then I'm going to cut it off so it's about a half inch thick. However, I'm going to saw it off. I just do not like to use cutoff tools on, on larger stock like this, and especially uh, when it isn't very free machining steel. So uh, I'll do that off, uh, off camera. Then I'll put it back uh, in the lathe and face that other side that has been uh, uh, cut off or sawed off because the finish will be terrible on that. And then this will be done. And this, the diameter on this isn't very critical, just so it clears the base of the uh, uh, little engine. And I'll make it about a half inch thick. In this operation, I have already sawed off the flywheel to the <coughs> thickness of about a half inch. And I'm facing it, chamfering it, and then it is done and ready for the set screw. Here's the almost finished flywheel, and I've already center punched it for a hole, and I know I've been showing you how to uh, fasten things with Loctite, but this is an alternative. Also, it's a little handier to be able to get the flywheel on and off uh, when you're making adjustments, so I'm going to put a 632 uh, Allen head uh, set screw in there, and here's the, here's the tap. And uh, But let me tell you just a, a couple things you ought to know uh, when you're tapping into a uh, rather uh, thick piece. Here's what I like to do on this type of hole. I'll drill all the way through with the tap drill size and then I'm going to use a clearance uh, drill, I don't know what size that'll be yet, to enlarge the holes so that in fact when I tap it only a small portion of it will be tapped right here. You'll surely break the tap if you attempt to tap uh, full length. You only need about four or five threads at the very most. Uh, so just this little area here, from the pen down to the hole, will actually be tapped and the rest is a clearance hole. I will not show that. I'm just telling you how to do it and I will drill that hole on the uh, drill press. The tap drill size was uh, was drilled as well as a clearance hole. Notice that the tap fits in there that, that far before I even start tapping. And that's a very essential point that I'm making there so that you don't break off a tap. Because these little uh, taps are real easy to break, very brittle, and uh, use a sharp one. go about a half a turn and back it off and go all the way in until you hit the opposite side of that cross hole to overcome the uh, tapered portion of this tap and now I'm bottoming it I can feel it bottom use a delicate touch when you do this so you don't ruin the work I have temporarily mounted the flywheel on the shaft. I just snugged it up a little bit. Now later on I will um, uh, determine where the set screw hits the shaft j just by uh, screwing it in there hard enough to leave a mark on the shaft and I'll put a little flat on the shaft because if you run set screws in and you deform the shaft it's very difficult to get the flywheel off so it's nice to have a flat where it will not slip. I have not uh, determined exactly where that bearing will be so I 
That's the brass bearing slipping in and out of the hole, and when I decide where I want to locate this in relationship to the center of the bore of the cylinder, then I will Loctite that in place. But she spins freely, and that's a nice heavy flywheel. Again, it's about 1 and 5 eighths diameter steel and half inch thick. I allow a little extra a shaft to stick out there, and that's just strictly up to your own taste. Well, I'm getting down to the end here. All of the parts that uh, are still needed are the piston, the piston rod, and this little connecting rod end here. And I'll start with that. And I'm going to make that out of brass. So this is 3 16 brass. And I need to drill an eighth inch cross hole in that. And I'm going to do that on the milling machine so that uh, my cross hole ends up uh, in, the, in the center without... Uh, coming out to the side looking at it from this direction kind of a tricky operation there's a lot of different ways of doing that you can use edge finders you can use a little drill jig but what I like to do is put it in the milling machine and bring a cutter up just till it touches and uh, get just a little bit of a flat spot on it and that's going to be the center then I don't need to use a wiggler or an edge finder uh, center drill it and drill it eighth inch through so that's what I will do now Normally you do not want to hold a milling cutter, an end mill, in a Jacob's chuck. But for this little touch-off operation it's going to be just fine. And that way the chuck is ready to go for my, uh, my drills. And I like to assemble the, my cutting tools that I'm going to be using right here on the platform. And they've already been double checked for size. Now notice how I'm holding this 3 16 brass in the chuck here. Or the vise rather. I am using uh, a wavy parallel. Did you ever see these? And they are crushable because that's wider than the work is thick. And again, do not cut your work off to length to start with. You want this uh, extra length so you have a handle. Now I'm going to place it on the parallel, but I'm going to let it hang over just a little bit so I don't drill into the parallel. Hold the work down. I'm tightening the vise. And now it's ready to touch off and make just a little bit of a flat spot there where I'm going to drill. And how far from the end? Approximately uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch and that can always be faced off again there if it's too long. But this will give me uh, a good cross hole that is centered. Just a little bit of a flat spot now. There we go, possibly a little deeper even than what I wanted. And now I'm ready to put the center drill into the chunk. Now by aligning my little center drill with uh, the flat, and that tells me where the top of the work is. So I have adjusted it back and forth in the y-axis until the center drill is in the center of the tiny little flat and now I'm ready to uh, center drill it. Now I will drill an eighth inch making sure that I clear the parallel. This is an eighth inch drill. It doesn't need to be reamed. Uh, eighth inch drill is just fine. And I have a cross hole that is uh, perfectly centered. These small parts are really kind of difficult to work with, but I sawed it off of the, uh, the rest of the rod. And don't do that till the last minute. It's easier if you've got something to hang on to. Now, an alternate way of making this is to just uh, use the entire thing here as the, uh, the connecting rod and uh, not reducing the size here, uh, which, is, which is what I am doing. I just think the proportion is better. 
Also, as an alternative, you could turn this down on the lathe to about 330 seconds, but that is a difficult operation on small stock. So probably want to avoid that. So now I will take uh, this little piece, put it in the lathe off camera, face it, and drill it, center drill it, drill it 330 seconds, and it doesn't matter if you go all the way through into the other hole or even all the way out to the bottom. You know, it's just, it's not important other than you don't want to get Loctite migrating from one part to another, if that's the way you want to do it. And uh, I will do that now, off camera, because it's a simple operation. I opened this hole up to a uh, a number 30, with a, which is just about uh, two or three thousandths larger than, uh, than an eighth inch, so that I would have a, a rather loose fit on this crank pin here. I don't want any binding. And now I'm going to apply Loctite onto that. And this is still a long rod of 330 seconds uh, brass. And I will cut that off later on when I determine uh, the position of the piston within the cylinder. It may not be exactly the same as uh, the other one. So the next job is the piston and I'm going to make it out of steel at this time instead of brass. Not as much scuffing. Do you see that there's a scuffing that took place on this uh, little soft piston even though it's in an aluminum cylinder. Of all the material I have in the shop I couldn't find any half-inch stock that was, uh, wasn't a little bit under. So I'm starting with 5.8 stock to make the piston and I'm going to turn it down to a uh, half inch 500 thousandths and then check for the fit and I'm going to polish and file this until I get a perfect fit into the cylinder. Then I will cut it off. Well I'll also drill a uh, center drill and, uh, and drill 330 seconds for the uh, uh, rod. So that's what I'm doing now and I'll, I'll work very slowly as I get down to the dimension so I don't go under. And the thickness here or the, the length of the piston is going to be between 5 16 and 3 8 and that isn't very critical at all. I took it down to diameter so it's uh, just a good fit and I've drill the hole 330 seconds and uh, I polished that a little bit uh, with emery cloth and I had filed it down to dimension the last uh, thousandth or so and then uh, checked the fit with this and it might still need a little work no that's pretty good Actually, I think it needs to be a little freer than that because I can't have any binding at all or the engine will not run. So I'll polish just about another half thousandth off. And then I'm going to cut it off with a cutting uh, cut off tool, parting tool, and uh, face the other side. Or I may not face the other side. That might be good enough. I spent a fair amount of time uh, running the piston uh, in the cylinder with oil on it till I got just the fit that I wanted and uh, if it was still a little tight I put a little uh, abrasive paper on it just momentarily and now I think I got it just the way I want it. And the fit should be good enough so that when you pull the piston out of there, but of course here we have to cover the, the four holes, but it should sound like that if you're to have a good fit. I'm trying to do the best job that I can because all this time uh, the uh, Joker is watching me and he's got a club in his hand so uh, he hasn't made an appearance uh, lately in my videos but he is ever present and is a force to be reckoned with. Well what I'm doing now as I near completion this is a uh, 500 grit Norton wet or dry I think it's wet or dry. Some guys said, no, you're not using wet or dry, it's something else. But I'm going to uh, polish this surface, the oscillating surface, just a little bit, like that. That'll take the, uh, the dye off and give me uh, 
a pretty flat finish and of course I'm doing this on a perfectly uh, flat surface plate. So I'll spend a few minutes doing that and then I'm going to uh, Loctite uh, the pivot rod in place and then determine the length of the uh, piston, uh, piston rod rather. And I had temporarily put the, the piston on the end of this shaft so I could polish it. That's, and I did put it on with Loctite but it'll come right off with my mini torch. What I'm doing now is trying to determine the length of the connecting rod and the piston is still on there loose. I can pull that off. But as I rotate the uh, flywheel here you can see or I can see pretty much where the uh, stroke is. And right now it's coming up too high and it's not coming down of course far enough. So I'm going to shorten this up by about uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch and then try it again and then I will uh, put the Loctite on and I'll do that off camera because I think you understand why how I'm doing this by fitting it up rather than a, a dimension. Now what I'm doing is uh, determining the position of the main bearing. So I've got it uh, roughly assembled again and notice here that my uh, uh, connecting rod is a little bit away from the crank pin so we got clearance there and I, th I think I'll push uh, the brass bearing in just a little little bit more so this this is a little bit closer to the uh, to the crank there and then I will mark it with a pen here or however you want to mark it take it apart and then I'm going to uh, use Loctite to hold that brass bearing into the main uh, upright I have it temporarily assembled and I'm just uh, checking for fit and final uh, dimensions and all of that. It, it turns real nice. No tight spots. So uh, what I have to do now is, is just several things. First of all, there are no ports yet for the steam or the air. As you can see, they have not been drilled. And after I locate those, I have to plug these two holes. And I, I of all the stuff I got in the shop, I couldn't find any uh, small aluminum rod like for TIG welding, 3 seconds and eighths. So I, I have some uh, tinner's rivets here that I will I will use, and I'll I'll put those in there with uh, again my my favorite Loctite. I hope I'm not totally dependent on that fluid, but I I know I mentioned it too much. So um, what I have to do now is transfer these holes, and that's the purpose of this hole being uh, uh, drilled on the exterior here. This is the only purpose for it, and then it needs to be plugged. Now I think all of you know what transfer punches are, and, and uh, I discovered those in 1965, and I never uh, regretted it. A wonderful product, and I'm going to use the very smallest one, which is a 332nd, and I will position the uh, crank here at 3 o'clock. And I will take the transfer punch, run it all the way in there. Again, I'm at 3 o'clock. I've got it laying on something firm, and I will strike it smartly. Back it out just a little bit. Now I'm going to turn it to 9 o'clock. And I did design this such that the piston does not come up and hit this. So I was thinking about that uh, ahead of time, because I've made a lot of these and I will strike this one smartly. Pull it out and that's done. Now it, an alternate way of doing that is to get it into the uh, same positions here and scribe it into the other position, three o'clock position, and, and scribe it and then later on uh, I'll make reference to how, how that uh, will help you locate them. I think you can see in this close-up there are the two holes that I punched and I know they will be in perfect alignment with the hole in the cylinder. So I will punch them a little deeper here 
with this uh, automatic center punch and then over to the camera on drill press to uh, uh, peck in there a little bit make sure they don't move and then to the bigger drill press and I'll drill them 330 seconds all the way through then I want to put some tubing in there like this so I will drill them from the other side it's almost like a counter bore about halfway through I, I will drill eighth inch and then I will uh, be able to fasten uh, the tubing in there ones for the inlet and ones the outlet or intake and exhaust and then those will line up perfectly I ran out of brass so I will use copper for those and I already have them cut someplace here on the bench and the bench has become quite cluttered and the joker does not like that alright the holes are drilled for the ports and you know what it looks a little bit like Casper the ghost doesn't it you gotta be at least 70 I think to know who Casper is okay uh, now on the back side and I put a little mark there so that I make sure I drill on the correct side that's where I'm going to drill eighth inch halfway through the tombstone and then I will lock tight the tubing in 330 seconds on this side eighth inch on this side and I think you can see that these holes are counterboard and these uh, pieces of eighth inch copper tubing here will be uh, shoved in there and with Loctite on them and uh, you know I took all the burrs off so I will uh, Loctite that and uh, one other thing I'm going to do here while well, I've got the Loctite bottle in my hand I am going to uh, I've got two different size rivets here I will Loctite that little aluminum rivet in there and this slightly bigger rivet in uh, in here and I'm going to be very careful that's a rather thin wall here that I do not uh, uh, put them in too far uh, where they obstruct the piston so I'll take this piston out so I can you know, watch it from the inside then I'll also clean this real good after that job is done so that there is not any Loctite in there that would freeze the piston in there because I don't think I'd ever get it out this is really a product that holds uh, I must say other than the heat will affect it if there's a lot of heat so with those a uh, few little steps that I just mentioned there old tubal canes are gonna go to bed and uh, good night even though it's not night when uh, you're watching this probably and I will see you on the morrow for the conclusion of this project.